Hey, good morning and hey howdy. We're here today and we're going to do some pigtailing. I know, you're like, James, how do you how do you understand so intuitively what I want to know about? I know things. So pigtailing is when we have a device, and I've already demoed this, and we're adding another set of wires, and when we're, let's say we're adding a plug, and there's not enough spaces to add all those wires, okay? And what you'll see a lot of times is wires, when you pull these things out, wires doubled up under screws, which is wrong. Uh, you'll see stuff forced into the back end, it's too large, it's wrong, okay? So what we wanna do is be able to add a wire, pigtail it, and pigtailing means we're going to have the tails are short pieces of wire so that your plug, no matter how many wires are inside your box, you only have one set coming to the plug. Here's the other advantage. A lot of times when you have older plugs and wiring, when you plug something in here and you move it around, you'll notice it'll cut on and off. With a light switch, without turning it off, you'll move the switch back and forth and the lights will flicker on and off. Loose connections. And if you have an older house, a lot of times pigtailing will get rid of uh, loose connections and voltage drop, okay? So today we're gonna pigtail, and we're up here in shock and Oz, uh, hold and layer of work and terror. It's pretty cool. So obviously imagine your house with, you know, beautiful drywall paint, but this is cool because I can beat it up and my wife's not gonna yell at me, super cool. So we already have two sets of wires, um, I advise you, of course, that once you take off your plug and you're going to do this, is take a meter. And let's make sure we have no power. I've got nothing there. Well, 0.29, it's feedback or static or whatever. We're good. I can handle this. I'm not going to kill myself today, at least not on video. So we're going to add a third set of wires just for the sake of uh, showing you how to pigtail. And we're going to add that to our plug. Now again, when you're doing this in an existing house, obviously you don't have the luxury of uh, seeing all this. This is going up to somewhere. Uh, new TV plug upstairs, outside, somewhere. The point is, is we're adding a third set of wires and we want to put a plug back in, okay? so process here because we're eliminating loose connections is you want good solid connections okay so we're going to put all of our grounds together doo, doo, doo. neutrals together and we're also going to make them the same length because whoever here was bef before we had extra wire so i'm going to cut these off i don't trust the old connections i'm going to make my own connections don't be lazy a lot of you are like i don't want to strip wire well, you know what? You need to learn how to strip wire. It's good for you, okay? Learn how to change oil, learn how to split wood, how to build a house. Why not? Okay. So, we want at least, by code, we're supposed to have at least six inches outside the front of the box. But, depending on how old your house is, you may not have six inches. You want as much as you can get comfortably. I'm trimming these all the length. I'm gonna leave the ground long, and I'll show you why in a second. We're now stripping the wires. We want to make sure that nothing's nicked. If it's a little long, it's okay. It won't hurt anything. Sorry, Paul. Don't want to hit Paul with a flying piece of plastic here. He's doing a great job, by the way. Okay. And then, with our grounds. I'm going to do a ground pigtail here. I don't usually, I use something different usually, but Again, the wires are a little short. So this is a training area, and we've used this. This box has been used about a dozen times. So it's been, it's been uh, rode hard and put up wet a bunch. You'll notice the studs all have holes in them with no wire. Uh, that's all because we've been training and drilling and wiring and then pulling it all back out. Okay, trim the ends. Got me a wire nut. If you've pulled off old wire nuts, don't reuse them. Don't do it. It's like, I'm going to save 14 cents. Yeah, you are, but you're going to cause future problems. So this is pigtailing. We've taken three, three wires, 
and then we added the tail, the pigtail. There you go. So the ground is now pigtailed. Okay. Now let's do the same thing with the neutrals. Okay, get them lined up. You want to get your, uh, your insulation point here where the white wire is or where the right insulation is. You want that even. A lot of guys will say, well, line, line up the copper. But if your copper isn't stripped evenly, it won't matter. You can trim it. Okay. So we're twisting. Wow. There you go. Even twists. We're going to add a neutral pigtail. Here you go. Another way to make this easier is just add a little pre-bend, lay it down alongside the other ones, and you're twisting clockwise. Hmm, that one's not so pretty. Let's see if we can dress it up before we put our wire net on it. Yeah, that's, that's not great. So here's what you're going to do like I'm going to do. You're going to say, oh, I don't like that. Straighten out your wire. So what was happening is the wire was riding up. So instead of just mashing a wire nut on it and hoping it stays connected, when you're basically just buying trouble for three or four months down the road, we're going to do it again. I'm going to pull. Nice. Get it turned. You can use a slightly larger wire nut. There you go. Good. So a lot of times people are asking, well, how tight should I do that? You want to do it in tight enough so that your wires in your bundle start to twist with it. To that point, it's tight enough. It's not going anywhere. Okay, we have our ground pigtail. We're going to roll in the neutral pigtail, which turns out to be slightly short. Push that back. Hot pigtail. So, as mentioned earlier, voltage drop, and a lot of times when these wires have been stabbed into the back of old plugs, which are going to be about at least 15 years old. Um, manufacturers changed it uh, about that time, or the code did, so that you can't stab number 12s, which is what these are, into the back of plugs. And the reason was number 12 was so stiff that the little pieces of metal that captured the copper where you stabbed it in the back would get loose and you would have um, intermittent power caused by the stab ends in the back of the plug. And that's uh, probably a bad design. It was a lot of business for me. We did a lot of um, a lot of pigtailing. Once again, I let it ride up. So let's back it up and redo it. What we're looking for is a neat bundle. Okay, We don't want wires to be crossed and super hideous here. And then we're going to bind, twist it up. So at this point, we're actually pigtailed. So now the circuit is continuous. In other words, we have three paths of power, one, two, three, that don't depend on the plug to keep their continuity. When you use the plug to hold the wires, if the plug fails, then everything that's coming, that's going out of this box will drop. Okay, so let's say this wire is our power in and then these two are power out. Right now they're connected pretty darn solid in the back of the box with pigtails with wire nuts. So even if this plug fails, the worst that's going to happen is this plug will go dead. But everything that goes out of here will stay on. And while we're standing here, we might as well uh, Might as well wire up the plug. Okay, some of you already know this trick, but your wire strippers will have these holes, and you can just put them in there, make your little hook. It's fantastic. Okay. Again, your hooks are going on so they're uh, turned the same way as you're tightening clockwise. The screws you don't use, I even tighten those down. I mean, not as tight, obviously, but I tighten them down 
to me it seems uh, like poor practice to leave something sticking out that might touch in short. So even the screws you're not using, tighten them up, cinch them down, get them out of the way. Here we go, close this around the screw, nice connection, not bad, it'll work. Okay, almost done. So the pigtailing will work the same way. I did this with the plug. We could pre-bend these so it folds back in the box. There we go. Make sure the, the ground wire is not going to ride back up. So this could be a switch box. Let's say you have a multiple gang switch box and you're going to add a switch leg, let's say for new cans or a new light. Um, you're going to have to tie the neutrals in. It has to be pigtailed. Okay? or you're adding to the hot bundle. But the point being is the pigtailing um, saves a lot of future problems and it makes sure, even on new construction, it makes sure that your power is continuous all the way through. Okay, so thanks for spending the time, pigs and tails. It's a great time. Thank you very much. By all means, um, click like, subscribe. And if you have any questions, you guys have been doing great on the channel. If you have any questions, shoot them in there. Let's answer them. Have a good day.